Uh, my name is Marzouk al Badr from Mubarak Hospital. Uh, first of all, we'll be talking about uh, varicose vein. They are abnormally large veins, commonly seen in the legs. The veins contain one way valves usually, which allow the blood to return from the legs against gravity. If the valves leak, blood pools in the leg, of the, and which can become enlarged or varicose. This is just an illustration. This is the normal vein with the valves. It's one way. Blood will not go back because the valves will be closed. When the vein gets enlarged, the valves will be incompetent. So the blood will leak back, which will cause more dilatation and more leakage. Uh, the other complication also can arise from perforator veins. Usually this is superficial, this is deep veins. Blood will flow in one direction to the deep. If the valve becomes incompetent, then the pressure from the deep will be transmitted to the uh, superficial system, which will cause dilatation. This is uh, the superficial system. It's just another illustration how the blood goes up against the gravity. In a, in a normal vein, while walking, the muscle will compress the vein, so the blood will be squeezed up. When the muscle relax, the vein, the, 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 the will get, you know, the, uh, the blood will not come back because the valves will be closed, like in this situation. If there is leakage, then the blood will just go back down in the legs. Uh, the risk factor for developing varicose veins are, you know, usually with, associated with age, family history. Uh, secondary veins will develop after DVT, uh, history of lipitis, of course, obesity, uh, standing occupation, pregnancy, and it's more common in female genders. Other risk factors are incriminated, uh, which are smoking, hypertension, oral contraceptives, or hormonal replacement therapy, physical activity, and constipation. Symptoms of varicose veins are usually common, affecting 1 to 15% of adult men and 20 to 25% of adult women. As we said, it's more common in the females. Uh, usually, it affects most of the time, so saphenous vein insufficiency is the most common form of varicosities, and that's what we're talking about, the long saphenous vein, actually. Uh, symptoms, most of the times, either cosmetic or sometimes the symptoms will be misleading. So a patient will give like pain, fatigue, muscle, muscle cramps, or heaviness in the, uh, in the legs. Uh, it could be associated with edema. Uh, there could be skin irritation in the form of eczema. I'm sorry, this is just it's a big slide. Um, or it can be complicated by ulcers. <clears throat> it has been classified into different stages, and all the stages can be uh, symptomatic or asymptomatic. The, for, in the, from the clinical point of view, we divide them onto CO, that's no, cl no, cl no, cl no clinical signs, uh, one small varicose vein or telangiectasia, two large veins, C3 associated with edema, 4 associated with skin changes but no ulcerations, 5 is uh, with healed ulceration, or 6 with chronic active ulcer. Uh, etiology can be congenital, as we talked earlier, primary or secondary. The anatomy is always involving the superficial veins. The deep veins, you know, if they are diseased, of course the disease will be transmitted to the superficial veins through the per perforators. The pathophysiology of the whole thing, it's either due to reflux or to obstruction. In either way, there is increased venous uh, uh, high pressure in the deep system. <clears throat> the other classification that we use mostly clinically is nearly the same thing. Um, see, see or no visible, but they could have symptoms of limb uh, cramps, which then you only can diagnose it using the, uh, the Doppler. C1 again, telangiectasia, uh, varicose vein without symptoms, asymptomatic, or varicose vein with symptoms. The rest are the same. Um, the clinical manifestation or classification, we only depends on two things, actually. Uh, nothing to see or, or feel, 
or telangiectasias, and they usually come for cosmetic reasons, or full, for, uh, full, full uh, blown picture of varicocytes. And that's usually, you know, most of the cases they come when they have re the reticular vein. They hardly present here, actually. M most of the time they will go to the GBs with leg pains. Uh, the pathophysiology, um, this is the, how it looks, you know, this is normal, or it could be non-seen, telangiectasias, or sometimes we call it spider web, and uh, full-blown picture of varicocytes. This is the duplex findings, uh, that's the skin on the top, muscles. This is the, uh, the superficial and deep fascia, it looks like the eye sign. This is the long saphenous vein. And of course, you will follow it and see the flow of the blood by the duplex. Uh, this is just, all the slides will show on the different anatomical vari uh, layout and variations. This is the long saphenous vein, which starts on the medial malleolus, or in front of the medial malleolus, going up on the side of the knee, all the way to the groin. The small saphenous veins start on the, from behind the lateral malleolus and terminate in the popliteal fossa. Uh, I'm sure, unfortunately, the videos are not working, so we'll just skip these. This is another illustration showing the long saphenous vein from the foot down to the, to, all the way to the groin, and the small veins, uh, saphenous vein in the back. And of course, we have also the accessory vein, which is, could be either most commonly the anterior or sometimes the posterior going in the, inside the legs. So I said symptoms and sign. Uh, the commonest usually is heaviness, going down to pain, edema, night cramps, restless, paresthesia, and itching. Itching usually is associated with the extra, the hotness because of the extra blood in the lower limb. Uh, this is just to would draw to your, bring your attention to concentrate on these things. Uh, the leg pain, night cramps, restless, heavy, itching, and you have to know, is it both or one side or the other? Uh, it's not usually aggravated by walking. It's this long standing that's really the, the, the problem. But you do get venous claudication in post-thrombotic syndrome. That's the, when the deep system is diseased because of previous DVT. Uh, usually it's aggravated by night because of the heat after long standing. It's worse in the summertime or with menstruation. Uh, walking on a cold floor usually gives them some relief. Um, the signs, of course, visible, you know, varicosities. Uh, you have to describe it, so they need to put in which classification, uh, as we talked about earlier on. Uh, all stages could be symptomatic or asymptomatic. So I said, this is supposed to be normal leg and looking, but the patient was giving symptoms, and that's what we call it COS symptomatic. And pelangiectasia, as I talked about earlier, actually, this is the C3 edema changes eczema and C4. Uh, C5 and 6 is when you have the ulcer or healed ulcer. Uh, this is uh, just another picture showing the same thing, actually. Uh, this is about the Doppler. I'm sorry, I, I don't have really the, the videos for the Doppler. So a patient will present when it is most of the time symptomatic, cosmetic most of the time. You can see this, what we call spider web or telangiectasias. And sometimes you can see the draining veins or feed, feeding veins, whatever. Um, same thing. This is again the same thing, telangiectasias. Until now, we don't see the picture, but some, there is here a picture of thrombophlebitis. Usually, Ladies are more common, especially after pregnancies or multiple pregnancies, and of course if they are fat. Uh, sometimes they complain of what we call it pleb, 
and sometimes they do present with bleeding episodes if this, uh, with, with any minor traumas. All these. Uh, very associated with edema. Uh, of course, all you know, bitting edema. Um, I said this is the worst when it's like eczematous. Sorry. Uh, eczema or ulcer development. Um, most phlebitic or the worst stages, usually there is edema which, which might mask the varicosities. Dermatitis, sclerosis of the skin. Uh, sometimes skin, skin is stretched, leg appears shaped like a funnel, you know, because of the stretching. Skin become rigid. Most of the time, you know, treatment starts with compression. Compression will change from this picture all the way to this picture. Of course, at one time we will remove the veins, but compression will do the job from there to start with this. Uh, skin atrophy is another complication of uh, long-standing varicosities or uh, post-phlebitic syndrome. This is ulceration, different type of ulcers. You know, varicose ulcer will heal once you, remove, you make the patient like offload or stay in bed or you use stockings, then it will heal unless there is a, compli you know, it's complicated by an arterial issue. Uh, differential diagnosis is all by duplex. Uh, thrombophlebitis is when you feel it's, it's tender, cord-like underneath neat the skin. Well, along the course of the long suffering vein. Uh, we don't treat it at the time unless it is uh, pro progressing all the way to the, uh, to the junction. We don't allow that. If it is below, then the treatment is just uh, painkiller and uh, stockings. Uh, you have to differentiate other reason for pain, which is most of the time orthopedic in origin. Uh, oh, sorry, this is it looks like varicosities, but actually it's muscle herniation through the fascia. So the treatment, I said, you can start by conservative, that is uh, uh, elastic stockings. Surgical therapy, you can do surgical therapy, which is the classical way. Uh, you can do sclerotherapy. Now, most of the time, people are changing to endovenous ablation either thermal, using the laser or radio frequency, or using, uh, we, are, we are using these two actually here in Mubarak. This we haven't yet, this is, it's like super glue. You put the glue inside the vein and you just stick it together. The last one is the new thing, which is Clarivane. It's mechanical and chemical therapy. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about the treatment because it's, uh, no, we do it in Mubarak. You're not going to do it anywhere else. Um, but you, patients should know, you know, it, it's all involved putting catheters inside the vein and timonacid anesthesia to, uh, to compress the vein and decrease the pain. And then it just burn the vein from inside, uh, which is the long suffering, not the branches or the tributaries. Usually it's, of course, there's no incisions. Um, fewer complication like you know, wound uh, infection or, pa or you know, painful wounds, uh, no scars, that's the most important thing. Uh, the risks, I said infection is there but it's much less than surgical. There could be bruising or bleeding at the puncture site um, from erythritis. Um, if you, you should avoid getting too close to the junction because then you might thrombose into uh, the thrombus will reach the uh, long, uh, sorry the deep veins, which is a common femoral. So, uh, the limitation, the most important limitation, is if it was too tortuous, then you cannot put the catheter inside. Uh, the other thing is this is the the venous seal. It's uh, I said, which I call it like the super glue. You put the glue here, you advance the catheter into the vein. Uh, again, I don't have the, the video. And then you just really put, you know, put, you can squeeze this, uh, the, the glue outside and you put compression for about three seconds. 
and then the vein just obliterate. Uh, the other one is the clary, clary vein. It is mechanical and chemical. You put the catheter, which is like a hockey inside the vein, and this will rotate in then 3,000 uh, RPM, which will cause the vein to go into spasm. It will destroy the intima, and then you can also squeeze the sclero sclerosant agent, which will obliterate the vein. And that's about all. Thanks a lot.